Um, good afternoon. Uh, I thought we had a good week of practice um, this week, you know, with being a uh, walkthrough practice to start. Um, and then, obviously, the last two days have been good situational speed practices, so I thought the guys really functioned well, um, and, and the practices, practices were really good. Uh, let me go back for a second and talk about, uh, you know, Robert Quinn. Uh, just for a second, just wanted to thank him for everything that he did when he was here. Uh, the relationship that him and I built, built uh, during the time he was here was outstanding. Um, and uh, his leadership was great. Uh, his work ethic was, uh, uh, you know, unbelievable on the field. And he's uh, certainly did a lot of great things for the Bears when he was here. So I just want to thank him for that. Uh, strong family man. And I really respect uh, Robert Quinn. So I wish him the best of luck uh, with the team he's with now. And uh, nothing but the best for him. Uh, we are going to activate 72 Leatherwood in, onto the active roster. Uh, that'll be done here shortly. And uh, I will open up the questions from there. Matt, when you have a trade like that happen with somebody that's in the middle of the season and so well respected within your locker room, especially coming off the big win you guys had Monday night. I mean, as a head coach, what kind of things did you have to do over the last couple of days just to make sure that everything was still moving? Forward? Yeah, so as soon as it happened, I walked down uh, to the locker room and uh, met with Robert, you know, talked to him man-to-man, face-to-face, and I thought that was important, um, you know, just to visit with him. And we visited for a while, then I went back and visited him with him again, and um, you know, and then it was that was that. But uh, in terms of the locker room, I always go back to the message I always tell the guys is that everyone's a leader. You know, so the first part of leadership is leading yourself. And so we ask all of our guys to lead. You know, so we I know we have four captains, we got a leadership council and all that. But to me, everybody leads, and uh, and they do a good job of that. And they they do a good job of encouraging each other, being there for each other as teammates. And that's what we expect. And that's no different than if it was him or anybody else. And so I think we have strong leadership inside the locker room uh, and not throughout the entire team, from the first man all the way to the you know to the last guy. So, um, and we have strong leadership in our in our coaching staff. You know, we're, we know we're partnering with the players, working with those guys to form the Chicago Bears. So I don't I don't really see that. Um, as you know, a big of a wake, you know, or, or, or um, disruption is what m- most people would see it as because of who we are and the men we have in the locker room. And, uh, continuity has been difficult on the offensive line, you know, throughout the year. How does Borum's uh, concussion kind of uh, exacerbate that or just impact? You know? Yeah, I mean, you, you have really have Borum and you got Lucas and you got Cody. You know, you got three guys that were starting for us at one point, and you know, guys got to go in there and step up and do the job. You know, just like Sco did last week, and uh, you know, just like Sam did last week too. So it's going to be uh, much of the same. You know, so it's going to be guys that have to. You know, you know, that's a tight group. You know, that's a really tight group. They're, they're close to each other. Um, they have great, really good coaches. Um, and uh, we're going to go in there and get it done. Does Reef uh, slip into that spot? Is that, uh, is that a fair assumption? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll see where it is. We only got so many options. I'm sure we can probably assume where everybody's going to be. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, we'll see where it goes. Uh, I'm not going to you know, tip my hat where everybody's going to be at this point, but uh, we'll see where it is. Well, can you at least address, like, uh, Reef's readiness. I mean, he's a veteran guy who's oh, used yeah. to slip it. I mean, if it is him, what can you say about just the idea of having a veteran there? You know. Yeah, Reef's been ready. He's been ready to go. Um, you know, he's obviously played a lot of snaps in the league. Um, you know, and he's, you know, knows his assignment, knows how to do it. So it's uh, he, he's always been a consummate pro as well. Uh, but uh, he's always been very helpful in the room uh, for those young guys. It's certainly for Braxton. Alex is concerned. What's your confidence level in his knowledge of the scheme and then his readiness coming back? Um, it, it's good. It's good. It's working. You know, work in progress. You know, he hasn't been here that long. You know, he was out. You know, he had. To, you know, was out for a little bit and then came back. He's only been back a couple weeks now, so it's it's where, where you would think it it is. Uh, but uh, he's working diligently at it with the coaches, and we think he's in a good spot. When you look at the offensive game plan from the Cowboys, do you notice any significant differences between when Dak's in there versus when Cooper Rush is in there? Yeah, I mean a little bit for sure. You know, you got the the experience issue, you know, uh, with uh, Cooper, and then also with Dak. You know, Dak's ran that offense for a long time. He knows what it is. He's been in that system. You know, it's really since it's the same system he's been since he got drafted. So, um, yeah. So there's a lot of different variants when when you have Dak in there for sure. Man, when you look back at your your time in Dallas, what are some of the things that you learned there that kind of helped shape the the head coach today? 
Yeah, I just I, mean, I can't say enough about the Jones family. Uh, they they are an unbelievable ownership. Uh, it's family oriented. Uh, Mr. Jones has been nothing but loyal, uh, you know, to me over those years. Seven years is a long time. Um, you know, close relationship with him, um, and then also Stephen, obviously close relationship with him. He's he's day to day working in the business right there. So Will McClay, the GM. Uh, does an outstanding job, so uh, nothing but great things to say about them, and uh, certainly enjoyed my time uh, when I was there for sure. It's going to be your first time back there as an opposing coach, right? Yeah, yes. Yep. Any emotions going back to that building where you, know, you, you learned a lot? Um, no, I don't think so. I, you know, it's it's a it's a football field. It's the same size as everyone else's, and and uh, you know, I've, I've been in enough games where I think it's uh, you know, it's a great atmosphere for sure. Um, I, I know that to be a fact, but uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's another game. Ryan Bowles talked the other day about how now with Rob gone, other veterans can step into the leadership role there. Uh, with Roquan in particular, yeah. I, I know he's been your lead, or a leader for you guys. Mm -hmm. but does he have an opportunity to have his role expand a little bit with Rob gone? Yeah, I mean uh, – there are guys that are doing a good job. You know, there's there's a really good leadership. You know, Justin Jones in that room is, is a good leader. Muhammad's a good leader. You know, we have a lot of good guys in that room that that lead that defensive line room and in defense. You know, we got, you know, Eddie Jackson. Uh, you know, Roquan Smith. There's a lot of good guys. You know, Jalen. Everybody, like I said, is leading themselves first. You lead through performance, okay. And then when you need to say something, you know, you say it, okay, when it's needed. But you mostly lead by action. You know, people get inspired by your actions, how you execute in the way in which you play the game uh, more than words. Um, and sometimes words are needed, but that's not that often. Do you have a new permanent captain in his place? I am in the process of thinking about doing that. Yep. Is it a three, does it, I mean, I imagine three, a rotation of three and your defensive end works, would work, but does Kingsley Jonathan, does he... Get, does he, is he a candidate, or will he get more snaps out of this? Or yeah, we were looking at him this week. We'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. You know, we'll, you know it's uh, obviously you like to have four in there, so we'll see where it goes and see how he's executing the next couple of days, and then we'll see what the plan is. Matt, how does it change the Cowboys' offense if Ezekiel Elliott can't play? You know, Power is a good back. You know, they got they have a couple of good backs. Uh, and obviously, Zeke. You know, I've I've known him forever, and uh, he's he's powerful and you know an unbelievable back. And, and Pollard's a, a good back too. They got the one-two punch just like we have. So, it's uh, it, it'll adjust their 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 thinking a little bit. But uh, we'll see how it goes during the game. We'll have to say see how it goes. You don't have to look too hard at the tape to see Tevin Jenkins finishing guys off, kind of setting a physical tone. Yeah. In what ways have you seen that potentially rub off on? The offense as a whole, maybe his teammates around. Yeah, it's been good, and the whole offense has been good at finishing. They finish a lot of plays uh, the right way. Uh, receivers, tight ends, the linemen down the field, um, and that's important. You know, thing that we, we, you know, we covet that. You know, and the guys want to want to be able to do that. And and he's been Tevin's been really good at that. Um, first of all, he's a great athlete. You know, the guy can really move on the perimeter. You know, to get out there and finish plays, you have to be athletic enough to stay on your feet to get down there. You know, so um, he's certainly that, and he does a good job with that for sure. We know that you know the numbers work in your favor when the quarterback can run, but it right. feels like we're seeing a lot of it. You know, Daniel Jones, Kowalski, and Shaq. Yeah, I think think it's uh, based on the individual quarterback. You know what he does well. You know if you, you know think about the course. You know across the league, the, you know Mahomes, Allen, all the all the guys that we talk about, Lamar. You know all the the, the top quarterbacks in the league. You know those guys are all have the ability to scramble, look down the field, and deliver the ball uh, down the field. So that always puts a. Uh, issue, you know, with the defense. You know, you gotta, you know, pay attention to that. You know, you gotta pay attention to your coverage down the field. And you also gotta pay attention to the pocket. And uh, I just think it's their style. You know, you're seeing more and more of that that type of style.